Hello and welcome to the Tech Learners. From today, we will learn the MCQs based on the design and analysis of the algorithm. So from now onwards, the next few videos will be dedicated to the MCQs in the subject design and analysis of the algorithm. So let's begin with the first video and the first MCQ on the subject design and analysis of the algorithm. So let's say question number one. Which of the given function provides the maximum asymptotic complexity? Maximum asymptotic complexity. So just to compare the functions, we need to put the large values in place of n. So let's say function 1 will have 2 to the power 1000. Function 2 will have 1000 to the power 3 by 2. Function 3 will have 1000 into log of 1000. And function 4, we have 1000 to the power log of 1000. So now we can uh, find out the values of these and then we'll uh, get that this 2 to the power 1000 will have the largest value and hence the maximum asymptotic complexity will be for function 1. Hence the right answer is A function 1. The next question, what is the best time complexity of the bubble sort. So we have seen this is a sorting algorithm where we use to compare the two elements to bubbles and accordingly we perform a swap if required. So this requires the best term complexity. This is C that is order of n. So the best time complexity of bubble sort is of order of n. The question number three, we need to get the time complexity of the following uh, given function. So uh, let's write the time complexity for each statement. This is statement number one, which is only an assignment statement. So the time complexity here will be of order of one. Then we have a loop with time complexity of order of n. Then we have a while loop, which is only performing comparisons. J is less than n and some elements. Uh, so this, these are just the comparison and comparison statement will take the time complexity of order of 1. Inside this while loop, this is the increment operation. Again, the complexity will be of order of 1. So now just by summing up all these, we have order of 1 plus then we have for the for loop order of n. Inside the for loop, we can product this, the while loop. This is order of 1 multiplied by the statement inside the while loop. This is again of order of 1. So finally, we are left with order of 1 plus order of n. And in these two terms, the highest order is order of n. So the final time complexity comes to be order of n. So now we have this uh, C option correct here. That is order of n. Now let's talk about the next question. What does it mean when we say that an algorithm X is asymptotically more efficient than any other algorithm Y? So we have the four statements here. Statement one, X will be better choice for all inputs. Statement two, X will be better choice for all inputs except possibly small inputs. Statement C, X will be better choice for all inputs except possibly large inputs and statement D, Y will be better choice for small inputs. So as we know that X is asymptotically more efficient than Y, then this statement number D cannot be true. Now, as we have already seen that this asymptotically notations uh, maybe give the same result on small value and we actually check these complexity on very large values. So the statement number B will be right. X will be better choice for all inputs except some possible small inputs. It is always advisable to check for the large values. So now here the option number B is right. Step question number five. Steps of the divide and conquer approach. As we know in the divide and conquer approach, first we divide the large problem into smaller problems and then we find the solution or we try to uh, conquer the smaller solutions, smaller problems and then we join these smaller solutions together to get the final result. So here we can see the step number A. First divide, then conquer the smaller problems and then combine those results together. So answer number A is correct for the divide and conquer approach. 
The next question number six, the complexity of searching an element from a set of n elements using binary search algorithm. So as we know, in the binary search algorithm, we used to have a low index, then we have a mid index and we have a high index. And on the basis of this mid index, we divide the array into uh, two parts and we select any one of the two parts depending upon uh, this mid element and the element to be searched. So we are basically dividing the array into almost equal halves every time. So the time complexity for this will be log of n. So here the option number B is correct. So now the time complexity for searching an element from a set of n elements using binary search algorithm is order of log of n. The option number B. Question number seven, the time complexity of matrix chain multiplication. So as we know, in the matrix, we use three loops to multiply one for the i, one for the j, and one for the variable k. So if you have seen this matrix multiplication, especially the chain matrix multiplication, you have seen the pseudo code and there are three loops. So now these three loops, loop number one will be having the order of n will be multiplied with inner loop order of n. This will again be multiplied with inner loop with order of n. So now this time complexity comes to be order of n cube. So here the option number D is correct. That is order of n cube. The next question, question number eight, a sort which is relatively passes through a list to exchange the first element with any elements less than it and then repeats with a new first element this is called okay this is called the insertion sort the right answer is insertion sort it's like the uh, when we compare the uh, elements in the list and exchange with the first element that is lesser than it so this is the insertion sort option number c i have uh, videos on all these sorts if you are confused with any sort so i uh, suggest you you can watch the uh, my playlist design and analysis of algorithm where I have all the algorithms, the pseudo codes and their time complexities as well. So now let's go on question number nine time complexities of three algorithms are given which should execute the slowest for large values of n. So if we have three algorithms which will execute the slowest for large values of n. Uh, the options are order of n, order of n to the power 1 by 2 or order of log of n. Again, we need to substitute the large values here. So if I substitute in place of n, so the first option will give us the 10,000. The second option will give us the 10,000 to the power 1 by 2, which is the square root of 10,000, obviously lesser than 10,000. And then we have a uh, log of 10,000, which is definitely lesser than the 10,000. So the largest number uh, comes here, 10,000, and that means this will behave slowest. So now the option number A is right, that the algorithm will execute slowest for large values of n. Question number 10, time complexity of knapsack 01 problem, where n is the number of items and w is the capacity of the knapsack. So we all have studied knapsack 01 problem where a thief had to select some items and put into the knapsack into a sack. The thief can take either uh, the full element, the full uh, object or it can or it has to leave that object. That's zero or one. Zero means it will not pick the object and one means it will pick the full object and keep it into the sack such that their weight is maximum. So this is the knapsack problem. And for the knapsack problem, the time complexity is order of n dot w, where n, uh, as we know, is the number of items and w is the capacity of the knapsack. Question number 11, time complexity of LCS. This is the lowest common substring lowest common substring problem where we have to find out the lowest common substring in the given string so now this is uh, option number b order of m dot n where m 
is the length of the substring and n is the length of the string. So this is the time complexity of order of mn, uh, option number b. Question number 12, discuss stress algorithm is used to solve which type of problems? All pair shortest path problem, single source shortest path problem, network flow or sorting algorithm. So here's the answer. Uh, discuss stra is used to find out or to solve single source shortest path problems. Question number 13, what will be the time complexity of the discuss stra's algorithm? So the time complexity for the discuss stra's algorithm is C order of n square. Question number 14, discuss stra's algorithm is the prime example for. So uh, it uses which approach, whether it uses greedy, branch inbound, backtracking or dynamic. So it uses greedy approach. If you know the discuss stra's algorithm, uh, it is applied on a graph and from the available path, discuss stra algorithm selects which is currently the best solution. And this is here, we can see if this is node A, this is node B and this is node C, then discuss stra's algorithm will go from A to C because currently this is the most greedy solution. So it follows the greedy algorithm. So answer number A. Next is floyd warshall algorithm is used for solving which of the problems? All pair shortest path, single source shortest path, network flow problems and sorting problems. As we know that the previous one discussed Ra was used to get the uh, solution of the single source shortest path problem. Here floyd warshall is used to get the solution of all pair shortest path problem. So option number A is the right answer for this. Now this is uh, question number 16. What approach is being followed in the floyd warshall algorithm? So floyd warshall algorithm uses the dynamic programming approach. Question number 17. floyd warshall algorithm was proposed by, so it is proposed by the option number A, Robert Floyd and Stephen Warshall. Question number 18, Bellman-Ford algorithm returns. So Bellman-Ford algorithm, if you know, a Bellman-Ford algorithm is, uh, can be used with the negative weight edges and it is used to find out a negative circle. So a negative cycle. So once the negative cycle is obtained, it will return, it will return 1 and if it is not obtained it returns 0. So it returns a boolean value either 1 or 0. So option number A is correct boolean. Question number 19. Bellman Ford algorithm provides solution for which type of problems? All pair shortest, sorting, network or single source. It is similar to the discuss stras algorithm with the difference that it also considers negative weight edges. So the solution, uh, the answer here is option number D that it is used for the single source shortest path. Now the last question for the today's video, question number 20, Bellman Ford algorithm can be applied for undirected and weighted graph, undirected and unweighted graphs or directed and weighted graphs or all directed graphs. So it is applied on directed and weighted graphs. So this is the option number C is the right answer. So we have discussed the first 20 questions in the next coming video we will discuss uh, question number 21 and till question number 40 and then so on. So uh, if you have not subscribed the channel please subscribe the channel hit the like button because you are going to get more and more MCQs on different subjects. Thank you so much.